All right, everybody, it's good to be with you again. Pastor Kevin coming to you with another round of uh, the series called Setbacks. Um, today, we are, again, no Bible. <laughs> it's because we're dealing with a longer story again. Um, if you want to take the moment, you can pause this and read the book of Jonah. We're going to talk about Jonah today. And the whole point is is that uh, in this series is we, we all struggle with setbacks, things that that um, either happen that we weren't intending or things that don't happen as, as we intend them. Uh, and oftentimes it kind of, it, it sends us for a bit of a loop. Uh, I had one of those happen recently and that's kind of why I chose to, to start this series. Um, the whole point in the book of Jonah, it's, it's about uh, a prophet who basically goes exactly against what God wants him to do. Uh, God says, go to Nineveh. He, said, he goes the exact opposite direction, really far away. And God grabs a hold of him um, to the point of storms and getting swallowed by a fish and so forth to get him back on track. Um, and while this is one of those ones that's kind of, it's different. It's like from Jonah's perspective, you know, you, what is the setback? Is it that God even asked him to do something? Um, or is it just because he didn't like what God wanted him to do? And it's probably more of the latter. Uh, and, and there's this whole idea that Jonah is this unwilling participant in God's, in God's call. And, uh, the reason is, is he doesn't like the people he's supposed to go give an opportunity. And his whole point is, is that and you'll see this at the end in the last chapter is that Jonah responds like, see, like, I, God, I knew you were gracious. I knew you were going to do something for these people who are horrendous, right? And it's, it's one of those things that um, what seems like, a, again, it's, it's a weird version of setback. Jonah is unhappy with what God wants to do with his life. Uh, and, and Jonah, I think, it's one of those things where I think Jonah understands God. But he doesn't like what God is doing, he doesn't like his methods, and he doesn't like the people he's, he's offering to save and, and those type of things. And there's this idea, you walk away from Jonah's kind of scratching your head going, like, yeah, the guy who's usually putting it out as the good guy, the prophet of, of the Lord, is actually kind of, in this case, while the Ninevites are the ones who are supposed to be the bad guys in the eyes of the Israelites, um, the Ninevites actually aren't so bad in this story. And that's not to say that generally speaking that they weren't a bad people and all those things. You know, we all, there are so many nations that have had problems over, over the, the millennia and so forth, right, that have been problematic. But the point here is that there's this irony in the middle of this book about a prophet that the ones that are actually, the one who's supposed to be the one who's saved in the mouthpiece for God is the one who's actually pushing back most against God. And the ones who are supposed to be outsiders, those who've done horrible things in the past, they're the ones who actually repent. Um, so I'd ask you, because I do think we sometimes encounter these setbacks that actually maybe even are against um, how we're dealing with them or against the way God would want us to, uh, if that makes any sense, um, where we are, we're the ones that are pushing against God's will and almost knowingly, right? And maybe sometimes we do this with sin or sometimes we do this and think about it this way. Maybe there's something in your life that you wanted so badly, so very badly, and you didn't get it. There was a setback occurred and you were just upset and angry with God because he didn't give you that thing or whatever it is. Uh, do you rem uh, do you like resonate with that at all? I mean, there are times in our lives where we want things so badly, and we don't know why God would not give them to us, why He wouldn't grant this, or or maybe there are things we don't want to happen so badly, but God would allow it to happen, and those type of things. Um, does that sound true to you? Have you had anything like that happen? Because this is the kind of setback I think we have to be really careful of. We have to be really careful when we stand like we plant our feet strongly down like, God, I'm not budging. It's like a, a five-year-old who's not getting the cookie that they want, and they just stand up. The parent says, you know, go to your room. No, I'm not going to go to my room until I get my cookie. <laughs> do you know that feeling? I do. I do. And I'm going to tell you, it's one of those things that, man, sometimes I feel like we've lost a vision of the holiness of God. The, it, it, God is good. God is just. God is holy. And I think we should all be very, very careful when we stand hard against the will of our king. Um, and, and again, one of the best ways of doing that is recognizing how he would stand so firmly on our behalf. 
how he would go to such extreme measures to give us an opportunity of salvation and hope and he'd give us grace and mercy. If we understand that, when we look to Jesus on the cross, we see how God would do so much. He would plant his, his resolve. He would be resolved on, no, they are mine. I am going to save them and nothing will stop him from doing that. So I, I pray that you would consider that in any of those situations where maybe you are you have your resolve and you're standing your feet firmly down and you're saying, God, what are you up to, right? Be really careful when you do that. I'd argue maybe we just shouldn't do that. Or if we do, we should be talking about it with another brother and sister in the Lord and it's saying, like, is my stubbornness sinful? Is my resolve sinful? Am I wanting to push something that maybe God would not be so interested in pushing? Does that make sense? I hope you'd stand with me today in that flexibility and submission, in that desire to actually listen humbly to our God, who is holy and just, but he's also good. Don't lose sight of how good our king is. Um, and if you do, what we go back to is we do commerce with a cross. We remember, we go back and kneel down at the foot of the very place where our salvation was, was, um, was gathered for us, where it was brought to fruition, okay? Will you do that with me today? Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the word that we would hear in a book like Jonah. We're something that it's like a self-imposed setback. It's a, it's a pushing against you. Help us not to do that through your spirit. Help us to actually listen carefully, quietly for your will and your way. In the middle of the things that we want, help us to ask, well, Lord, what is it? that you want? What is it you want from me in this situation or in this thing? Or is this desire that I have too strong or pointing too hard in a direction? Father, we look to you to soften our hearts, to soften our resolve and point it toward you and to what you want for us. Your kingdom come, your will be done on this day and every day. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, have a great day.